the Sanji Rebellion or Thora the Zanj was a major uprising against the Abbasid Caliphate which took place from the year 869 AD to 883 AD. It began near the city of Basra in present-day southern Iraq and was led by one Ali ibn Muhammad who proclaimed himself a descendant of Ali through the line of Zayd. The rebellion was called the Zanj Rebellion because it involved a lot of Zanj people, that is say black people or black slaves that had risen up in rebellion. A little bit of context to this. Slavery was very common during the Abbasid era and about 30% of the population in southern Iraq is believed to have been slaves in various ways. And the majority of slaves worked in plantation fields in the southern parts of Iraq, tending to the farmland of the flood plains at the end of the Mesopotamian rivers, of the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. And this was backbreaking hard labor. And as the economic exploitation of slaves, apart from some construction work, took place mainly in the countryside, away from the cities, as you can't have fields within cities, and like more, almost everything else about rural life, it is sparsely documented. So we don't know that much about the conditions, but the few things we do know about it, such as slave imports and some minor documentations about the slavery in southern Iraq, by Arabic chroniclers such as Atabari and Al Mas'udi, together with what we know about slave labor in similar conditions in other places gives us a life expectancy of about five years. Meaning that slaves at this time were more or less worked to death on the fields and thus would have had ample reason to rebel against these conditions. However, there exists some doubt about if this rebellion was started initially as a slave revolt or it was started as a religious Shia revolt against the Sunni Abbasid Caliphate that was joined by a lot of slaves. However the case may be, it is important to know that this was not only a rebellion made by slaves working on plantations, but there were several others that joined this rebellion, including local groups, local men of power, Bedouin tribes, Shia sympathizers, there was a lot of different groups here, so it was not only slaves, but also clans and peoples discontent with the Abbasid's rulership. And possibly worse still, there were even slave soldiers that had rebelled. That is to say soldiers that were slaves that fought for the Abbasid army. Making the Sanj rebellion one of the earliest examples of a slave soldier rebellion which would happen again by the Tolunion, the Ixidion, and many other later examples. It is also important to know that the Zenj rebellion happens in the context of the Bauda Samarra, the chaos of Samarra, which was a period of great instability for the Abbasid Caliphate. It was a period of civil wars, where several caliphs died, there were also invasions at the borders of the Abbasid Caliphate, and so on. And several political entities were created in this chaos. One of these entities were the Safarid dynasty, a Persian Islamic dynasty that had risen through rebellion against the Abbasids before and were now poised to invade Iraq. So the Abbasids were fighting them at the same time as this rebellion. So, in the initial stages of this rebellion, the Abbasids were not able to respond in force. And a truly serious campaign against these rebels would not be undertaken until the caliphal regent Abu Ahmed ibn al mutawakkil more known by his other honorific title of al muwaffaq began to prepare a campaign against the rebels in 872. However, this campaign actually ended in failure and the Sanj remained on the offensive over the next several years and actually managed to expand the extent of their rebellion and their conquests up to the gates of Baghdad, the former capital of the Abbasids. 
Now you might wonder why it was so hard to defeat these rebels and why it took so long to defeat them. Because they were eventually defeated. And it is that the terrain favored lightly armored infantry as most of the fighting were in areas close to marshes where these rebels could easily do raids out of these marshes and then later retreat into these marshes of southern Iraq and defend them as easily defensible areas as heavy cavalry would get bogged down or even sink in these marshlands. However, eventually the Abbasid government would begin to advance and in the late autumn of the year 879 when the now Caliph al muwaffaq sent his son Abu al-Abbas the future Caliph al muqtadid with a large force to crush this rebellion. He was sent as his father was busy with other things during this time, related to the general chaos that existed during this era. However, his father would join him later, and al muwaffaq himself would lead the armies in the following year. And over the next several months, the Abbasids would slowly begin to win against these rebels. However, what might be interesting here is the strategy that al muwaffaq and al muqtadid used in order to win over the rebels. Because their main success was not through brute strength, but by promising to spare people if they surrendered and give benefits to certain groups within the rebel faction under Ali ibn Muhammad, they managed to divide the rebellion into smaller groups, some of which they did not have to fight against. And it should be remembered that this Sanji rebellion was not a rebellion made by a homogeneous group of people. Remember, it might have started as a slave rebellion, or it might have not started as a slave rebellion, but there were several groups involved in this rebellion. Some of whom were not slaves and had other issues with the Abbasids that could be placated by the Abbasids doing certain concessions. And also there existed groups within the rebellion that had issues with other groups in the rebellion. So by being able to split the opposition, they ensured victory by the strategy of Divida et Impera, divide and conquer. Especially as they had managed to make a large part of the Senj rebellion either give up or even join them before the fall of the city of al muhtara in August 883. And the fall of Muhtara combined with the death or capture of Ali ibn Muhammad <gasps> and most of the rebel commanders brought the rebellion to an end and the remaining rebels either surrendered or died in combat that followed in smaller skirmishes after this great fall. And you could say that the rebellion ended here. Though the rebellion still had a lot of consequences, as after the rebellion, you had mass killings of those rebels that survived and in those areas that had supported the rebellion. You had extremely brutal execution afterwards in order to make a demonstration that rebellions like these would never be allowed again, including slaves that didn't even participate in the rebellion, and even the killings of slave soldiers that had remained loyal to the Abbasids, just to make a point. Though these slave soldiers could have also been slave soldiers that had originally rebelled but later rejoined the Abbasids. It is also important to note that the slave rebellion itself had been very brutal too before these mass killings, as the rebels did mass massacres as well, and the total death toll is seen by a lot of historians as being somewhere between half a million dead at the lower estimates to several million dead at the higher estimates. All in all, this conflict this Sanji rebellion was a very brutal conflict and the famous Arabic chroniclers Al-Tabari and Al-Mas'udi consider the 
Sanjumelion to be one of the most vicious and brutal uprisings of the many conflicts and rebellions that plagued the Abbasid central government during this time. And in fact, this rebellion, together with other conflicts at this time, caused so much destruction that the Abbasid Caliphate would never be the same after it, and trouble would just continue from here for the Abbasids. As the Sanj Rebellion had made the Abbasids look weak, the Sanj Rebellion possibly even contributed to the rise of the Karmatians of Bahrain a few years later. Through veterans from this rebellion taking control of a large portion of the eastern parts of the Arabic Peninsula under the banner of the Karmatians. The Karmatians were a group that belonged to Shia Sevener Ismaili Islam, which was a different sect from the Zaydi Islam that Ali ibn Muhammad was said to have been following. Though it is not unlikely that there might have been several different Shia elements within the revolts of the Sanj Rebellion. And that Ali ibn Muhammad's claim about being a descendant of Ali was broader than just saying that he was a descendant from the Zaydi line. Or also, even though Ali ibn Muhammad himself claimed to have been descended from Ali ibn Abi Talib, the son-in-law of the Islamic prophet Muhammad and the fourth caliph of the Rashidun Caliphate, this was largely rejected by Muslim historians of that era as false. And it is possible that Ali ibn Muhammad just said that he was descended from whatever line gave him support, or the Shia groups of this time didn't care that much about where exactly on the tree of the family of Ali he came from. And or a lot of the people within the Zenj rebellion against the Abbasids could shift their allegiance and their religious belonging more in accordance to what was opportune than what was theologically coherent. But in any case, the Karmatians appeared both due to the influx of Shiite soldiers that had participated in the Zenj rebellion and due to the weakening of the Abbasids that had happened due to the Zenj rebellion. And the Karmatians weren't the only group that arose due to the weakness of the Abbasids due to this event and other events. The Tulunion in Egypt, for example, another slave rebellion made by Mamluk slave soldiers that took control over Egypt. Though eventually the Abbasids would regain control of Egypt, only to lose it to the Ikhshidiyun, another Mamluk slave soldier rebellion later, and eventually Egypt would get conquered by the Fatimid Caliphate. In this context of slave rebellions, the Zenji rebellion was just the first of what would become a series of disruptive rebellions caused by slave soldiers. Who the Abbasids had increased their reliance upon due to the chaos that existed during this period as other sources of troops were denied them. And it should be remembered also that the Zenj rebellion wasn't just a rebellion made by slave soldiers but also by regular troops belonging to other entities than the centralized Abbasid Caliphal authority. Thus the Zenj rebellion also represents the decentralization of the Abbasid Caliphate and a part in a greater picture of the Abbasid Caliphate fragmenting into parts. And this fragmentation and the chaos during the Zenj rebellion resulting in a weakened Abbasid Caliphate also made the Eastern Roman Byzantines able to score several successes on the Anatolian frontier during this period. All in all, this slave rebellion was one of those events that began to mark the decline of the Sunni Abbasid Caliphate. Please do subscribe as it would help the channel spread awareness about the humanities.